Welcome to Fernbank Forest. My name is Eli Dickerson and I'm the ecologist on staff at Fernbank. And I'd like to invite you for a short walk through this old growth forest with me. Fernbank Forest is a refuge. It's an urban oasis. It's a treasure trove of urban biodiversity. Would you believe that there's been 200 bird species identified in the forest, hundreds of native plant species and wildflowers, including bay star vine, which is a state threatened species, and other species like pale yellow trillium. In addition to that, we've got 17 amphibian species, including the extremely rare spring salamanders that you won't find anywhere else in Atlanta. We've also got 13 reptiles and 13 mammal species, including river otters, which you might see on a visit down to Huntaman Ponds. Additionally, there are 64 native tree species found in Fernbank Forest. Some of these trees are up to 14 feet in circumference and 156 feet tall. This tulip tree is actually one of those species that exceeds 150 feet tall. To put that in perspective, that's just shy of a 16-story building. But the neatest thing about the trees in this forest, in my opinion, is that some of these are in excess of 300 years old, which is simply amazing. You may wonder, how was all of this protected right here in the middle of Atlanta? Well, we have to flash back to the late 1800s when a young woman named Emily Harrison moved here with her family. She was just a teenager when she moved into Fernbank Forest and they made their homestead here. Previously located in Decatur, they decided to move into this area long before there were other families around. The Harrison family loved this spot and Emily in particular was very fond of the woods. In fact, she probably knew where all of the big trees were and all of the curves in the creek and big rocks that she could climb on as well. Emily grew into an adult who was still passionate about this forest and she rallied support to help save and protect this forest because she knew it was too big just to keep in her family. So with the help of citizens in Atlanta, scientists, and our founding trustees, Fernbank was founded in 1939 as a school in the woods to teach about nature. All of this was protected as a school in the woods and a living laboratory. And today we continue that legacy. But one cannot simply protect a forest passively. It's an active process. This forest had become degraded due to many non-native invasive species invading from the perimeter over the decades. So the last five or more years, we've worked very diligently to remove these invasive species and then allow the native biodiversity to flourish in the forest. Through that process, we've been able to open up the forest. It's allowed us to do more programming. It's allowed us to have more guests visit the forest and more school children visit the forest as well. Today, this is a teaching forest. We conduct primary research and we also partner with other institutions for research. But most importantly, we have thousands and thousands of guests and school children visit the forest. We have programs like family forest walks we also have animal encounters, drop-in programming like ranger explorations, and our marquee school program, the CORE program, where we serve underserved youth, bringing them out into the forest for an immersive all-day experience where they learn scientific techniques and they get to observe wildlife here in the midst of 300-year-old trees in this old growth forest. Fernbank Forest really is a special place that's dear to my heart and I hope that you find the time to come visit sometime soon.